Good morning. It's Tuesday, June 13th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, There's No Place Like Home, and our scripture is Hebrews chapter 13, where the apostle writes, So also Jesus suffered and died outside the city gates to make his people holy by means of his own blood. So let us go out to him, outside the camp, and bear the disgrace he bore. For this world is not our permanent home. We are looking forward to a home yet to come. Most of us are familiar with Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. She found herself in a strange land and desired nothing more than to go back home. Glenda, the good witch, outfits Dorothy with magic red slippers and tells her to close her eyes, click her heels three times, and say the phrase over and over, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. For some people, a church is much like the ancient temple or even the tabernacle in the wilderness. It's a building, hardly a home. The writer to the Hebrews makes the point that fellowship with an eternal God is not a static issue. It doesn't stand still. Human beings are mobile. They're growing or dying or a soul that's never entombed. Buildings, on the other hand, stay where they're constructed. We can be lost in the sense of losing our way or living in a disobedient way in the far country, away from God's fellowship. We can be unready for dwelling in our permanent home, a house not made by human hands. That unreadiness is born of an unwillingness to bear the disgrace of the one who saves us. It may not be belligerence, but rather just holding back from totally giving oneself to Christ as a witness. It can be described as coming to a worship service as a spectator rather than a participating member of the team. Spectators have little invested in church other than an hour or so of time in any given week. By contrast, worshipers are there to offer praise and all they have. They come with open, empty hands, willing, even eager to have God fill those hands with whatever task, whatever blessing, challenge, or mountain to climb God may pick out for us. It is this willingness to leave the building and enter the harvest field which describes worship, not merely singing a few songs and listening to the preacher's words. That describes enduring ritual, hardly worship. Before I turned two years old, Mom and Dad left the bustle of New York City for the serenity of a little hamlet. Now, a hamlet, in case you're wondering, is not breakfast food or one of Shakespeare's characters, but rather a community, a bit smaller than a village or town. We had dirt roads, an old two-story house for a school district, and a town that had managed to stay very small since its founding in the 17th century. The place was named Hopog, which is a Native American word translated Sweetwater. My parents weren't interested in becoming land barons. They were concerned with raising two boys to be men. The tiny four-room house on Long Island was surrounded by tall oaks and elms and whatever scrub brush could eke out a living in the sand. Dad cleared most of our yard with a hand axe and a lot of sweat. Whether you're raised in a big city or a rural backwater, commitment to what life God gives you is what teaches you there's no place like home. For you today, I guess the only thing left to say is, when you join a church, make sure you make a commitment to the home part. Otherwise, the building is just a house. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.